Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you all. Um, the Father Albert is uh, on his way to a place a little north of Chicago uh, for a week-long training uh, that he's involved in, uh, training himself to be, not training himself, allowing other people to train him to be a, a spiritual director. Uh, among other things, Father Albert is a guy who does not mind working to prepare himself for service. And uh, so uh, I invite you to pray with me this week for him that uh, it may be a good uh, use of his time and uh, his energies for God's service. Today is the Sunday that is, besides being the second Sunday of Easter, the octave of Easter, uh, is now recognized as Mercy Sunday. Uh, uh, Pope St. John Paul II uh, marked this Sunday as Mercy Sunday, partly because of the prayers that we offer but essentially, uh, because without God's mercy, without God's mercy, uh, we have nothing, and uh, so we acknowledge the great mercy of God in our prayer and in our attitudes. Let's acknowledge this at this time our own need for the mercy of God, our own sins and failings, our own weaknesses, let us present ourselves humbly before God. Lord Jesus, bread of life and food for our journey, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, light for our path. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, way that leads to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs>
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font we have been washed by whose spirit we have been reborn and by whose blood we have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many signs and wonders were done among the people at the hands of the apostles. They were all together in Solomon's portico. None of them dared join them, but the people esteemed them. Yet more than ever, believers in the Lord, great numbers of men and women were added to them. Thus they even carried the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one or another of them. A large number of people from the towns in the vicinity of Jerusalem also gathered, bringing the sick and those disturbed by unclean spirits, and they were all cured. The word of the Lord. Our response to the Lord's word is, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Stone which the builders rejected has become. 
A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, your brother, who share with you the distress, the kingdom, and the endurance we have in Jesus, found myself on the island of Patmos because I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony to Jesus. I was caught up in spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet which said, Write on a scroll what you see. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. And when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, one like the Son of Man, wearing an ankle-length robe with a gold sash around his chest. When I caught sight of him, I fell down at his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the netherworld. Write down, therefore, what you have seen and what is happening and what will happen afterwards. The word of the Lord. be with you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John on the evening of that first day of the week when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them peace be with you When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them. Whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side and do not be unbelieving but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You could find in the scriptures that we heard this morning a kind of common theme in each of the readings, uh, possibly the importance of touch. The visionary in the book of Revelation is freed from his fear by the right hand, touch of the one who turns out to be Jesus in his vision. The hands of the apostles work many cures which give thousands the courage to throw in their lot with Jesus. And Thomas in the gospel is invited to experience the wounds of Christ close up and personal. If that's what he needs to believe in the power of Jesus over death and sin and all kinds of harm. The gospel we heard at the end of today's passage was written so that we, people of every generation since those first disciples, that we might find the way to live as disciples of Jesus and that believing in him, not just with our minds, but in concrete and tangible ways, we might have life in him. We are writing the gospel today, you and I, for people to hear in our parish, in the Diocese of Kalamazoo, in places where our offerings take the word of God. Our words carry the message and our works confirm it. Our profession of faith symbolizes our belief and our deeds of service prove that our words have substance. The witness of our words has a different heft because of the witness of our community in action. There are lots of people whose lives are changed by the touch of the body of Christ in our diocese. The Bishop's Annual Appeal, which is launching today for the year 2022, makes the touch of Christ a felt reality in many lives. The Bishop's Annual Appeal, therefore, is especially important for us here because of what it does for us. It takes us where we can fulfill our responsibilities. We know that no person and no parish could take on most of the initiatives of the Bishop's Annual Appeal funds. This appeal is the vehicle that harnesses the contributions of many to bring the saving touch of Christ to people in need. Bishop Bradley has sent this thoughtful message to encourage us.
Greetings, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. It's a great joy to come to you during this glorious Easter season when we can be proclaiming once more, Alleluia, Jesus is risen. As you know, we're also continuing to celebrate our diocesan jubilee year of the Holy Spirit, all the way through till Pentecost Sunday. And I hope that during this year that you've been able to grow in your awareness of the works of the Holy Spirit in your own life through the Holy Spirit's sevenfold gifts. We pray that your life is bearing fruit, the fruits of the Holy Spirit in all the ways that you are living your lives. Jesus shares with us what we need to be faithful to the vocation that we all share through our baptism, to live and grow in holiness throughout our lives. And the Holy Spirit is what empowers us to do that. Toward the end of this Easter season, when we celebrate the great feast of the Ascension, we will hear Jesus tell his apostles as his departing message, you are to be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. And that's the same challenge that all of us have as well through our baptism to be joyful missionary disciples, witnesses to the risen Jesus in our world. One of many other ways of doing that, but one practical way is by the, your generous support to the Bishop's annual appeal. And it's through that appeal that we're able to fund the ministries, the programs, the services of our diocesan church. And so in this brief message, I'd just like to focus on explaining how your generous support furthers the mission of the church here in our diocese in three particular ways. By fostering vocations to the priesthood, by helping to strengthen uh, our parishes to be vibrant places, and third, by reaching out in charity to those who are in need. First of all, by fostering vocations to the priesthood, you really help to fund the specialized education and formation our seminarians need to become solid, holy, well-formed future priests. And once ordained, those diocesan priests give their lives in priestly service to accompany you every step of the way of our journey of faith. Our priests celebrate Mass for us each day. They ensure that the Holy Eucharist is with us to be the essential spiritual food we need for our life in this world. And they celebrate the Sacrament of Penance regularly, helping us to find forgiveness for our sins. In addition, they'll be there to help prepare and witness your sacramental marriages, to baptize your children, to provide the sacraments of the sick, and in general, provide for us that much-needed pastoral and spiritual care we all need. An investment in the priesthood is an investment in the church. We also need to keep finding ways to make more vibrant our 59 parishes and 28 parish collaboratives in their mission to be centers of hope for the faithful. And our diocesan offices provide our parishes with support, tools, programs to better serve our parish communities. A number of these resources take place really behind the scenes. Financial support, training in human resources, administrative and supervisory acceptance, uh, assistance for our parish, our Catholic schools, and religious education programs, communications help, and so much more. Other ways of helping our parishes to be vibrant in the ways of sharing our faith include major events during the year, our annual catechetical conference, our online religious education programs, the online faith formation and enrichment programs, professional development for our Catholic school educators, to name just a few. And thirdly, Jesus told us that the most important of all the commandments is for us to love God and love our neighbor. This is most evident as we reach out with Christ's love in Christian charity to those who are in need. One example of how we do this through the Bishop's Annual Appeal is by supporting 
the life-affirming works of Catholic Charities, Diocese of Kalamazoo, and the Catholic Community Center in Benton Harbor. These organizations are the ones that, in our name, in the name of the church and the diocese, reach out in loving service to young mothers in need, troubled youth, those struggling with mental health issues, and those needing to secure basic human needs in food and utilities. And so as we continue to respond to Jesus' mission, that we are to be his witnesses, helping to continue advancing the kingdom of God here in the nine counties of our diocese, I thank you for prayerfully considering your gift. Your support of the Bishop's Annual Appeal today is an investment in the Church of Tomorrow. God bless you now and always. Thank you very much. Let's stand together now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Let's lift up our prayers now with confidence in the mercy of God. For the joy of Easter to remain in the hearts of the faithful and for church leaders to share the good news with love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders to strive for peace, for an end to war and suffering, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those burdened with illness and pain and those in need of food and shelter, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sister diocese, our sister parish, and our St. Ambrose Parish family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may see the work of the Bishop's Annual Appeal as an opportunity to extend our love and service beyond the boundaries of our parish and local community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed, especially the benefactors of our parish and those in our Book of Intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Abigail Christine DeLock, who passed away recently, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Julius Caesar Millers, for whom this Mass is celebrated, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now invite the intercession of our Blessed Mother as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. We pray this through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Please be seated.
Let us join together in our offertory song number 505, We Walk by Faith, 505. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice for me and through the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, we may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, 
But on this day above all, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed to laud you yet more gloriously, for he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed our death, and by his rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For all life, uh, for through you, our Son, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his coming, to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, 
Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Ambrose, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. To him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's give one another some sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ.
today's announcements. The Parish Directory Picture Week is next week. It is not too late to sign up. Please see the counter in the vestibule for details on how to sign up online or call the office. Save the date for the St. Ambrose First Annual Golf Classic Tournament on Saturday, July 16, 2022 at 9 a.m. at Eastern Hills Golf Course. Registration forms will be available beginning the weekend of May 7th and 8th. If you would like to volunteer or you or your business would like to buy a hole or donate prizes for this worthwhile event, please call the office. The Bishop's Annual Appeal is an opportunity for all Catholics in the Diocese of Kalamazoo to join together to further the mission and ministry of our church in Southwest Michigan and beyond. Our support of the work of the larger church through a pledge to the Bishop's Annual Appeal is made possible by our returning a portion of what God has given us. Our 2022 goals for St. Ambrose are $57,876 and for every parishioner to participate. You will be receiving a mailing within the next two weeks that will include a letter, a pledge card, and a return envelope from the Bishop. Commitment weekend is May 7th and 8th. We ask you to prayerfully consider giving to the Bishop's Annual Appeal. We are thankful for every one of you and have a great week. Father Albert, oops. Father Albert asked me to say another word or two about this year's Bishop's Annual Appeal. He offered this little um, African wisdom. I mean, this is, you know, every, every cultural group has their own sayings, and this is, this is one of Father Albert's. If you want to go fast, walk alone. If you want to go far, walk with others. Hmm. Father Albert added, he does not want to walk alone. <laughs> if we join hands, he said, uh, we will go far. And so let us work together here in this uh, joint effort. Uh, Father Albert uh, asked Woody and Cindy Isaacs to work with us to help us reach our goal. I think Woody is here today to uh, let us know a little about them. Um, and uh, I think Cindy maybe has a prior commitment this morning. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'll be very brief, but um, I just wanted to introduce myself. Uh, my wife, Cindy, could not be here this morning. She's at uh, the Kalamazoo Marathon volunteering for that. Um, I'm Woody Isaacs. Uh, we're longtime parishioners. Um, over 25 years, um, our sons have been part of the parish and uh, went through the Catholic schools here in the diocese as well. Uh, we just wanted to say hello. We don't normally do this kind of thing, but... Um, as those of you who know Father Albert probably realize, he's pretty persuasive. And uh, so he asked us to, to take this on and we've agreed to. Um, we'll come back next week with some more information and uh, hopefully we can all work together and, and meet our parish goal for this year. So thanks very much. Woody, this could be the new normal. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Father Albert asked me to express his gratitude to Woody and Cindy for accepting this invitation to work with him in this effort. Uh, he asked me to add also that if you would like to join in moving the effort forward, uh, he would be happy to have your help too. Let's stand now and pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and in our hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
The Mass is ended, go in peace. Alleluia, Alleluia. Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. I think I forgot the blessing. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us go in peace. <laughs> let us sing, join together in our closing song, number 568. 64, sorry. Uh, Christ the Lord is risen today, 64. <laughs> the Lord. Sweet.